everybody, this is Joe Maglita, Editorial Director at GeekNet Media. Intel's James Reinders and his co-author Jim Jeffers have spent the better part of the last two years traversing the globe, talking with customers and developers about the Intel Mini Integrated Core Architecture in Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. They've now produced the first authoritative book on programming on the new architectures and the new products. Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor high performance programming will be available from the publisher Morgan Kaufman in February. Today we'll be talking with James Reinders about what's in the book and why it's a must read for parallel programmers. James, welcome. My pleasure. I noticed that you structured the first few chapters around the idea of a road race, which I thought was kind of interesting. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose that metaphor and where that journey ultimately takes readers? Yeah, well, we, we wanted to get going in the book and showing coding examples. So we thought of it like taking a sports car out. Um, you first think of getting a sports car to run really fast. So you would want to do that on a straightaway piece of track, racetrack or something. So we sort of treated programming like that. We start off with, a, in a way, a sort of a simple programming example, but one that lets you use the full power of the coprocessor. But it's a little artificial, and it's sort of like driving down a speed track. And then we introduce uh, curves, we introduce bumps in the road, things like that, to get more and more real world. But we do it a step at a time so that you can see um, the things that have to be introduced to deal with the, the realities of the real world. So we go through uh, chapter by chapter um, introducing curves and introducing speed bumps. In the case of this, it's introducing things like memory bottlenecks and vectorization and the need for scaling. But fundamental parallel programming challenges, but we do them a step at a time so that the readers can follow with us and see uh, you know, our thought process of how we think about uh, programming uh, parallel processors. Neat. And, and so what does a reader come out with at the other end of that journey? What, what kinds of capabilities do they have? Well, hopefully a good appreciation for the challenge of using an Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor, which is strictly the challenge of parallel programming. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's one of the uh, really surprising things, I think, that we learned as we wrote the book and as we've been teaching, actually, how to program this, was that the biggest challenge for people in using the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor is just the challenge of parallel programming, mm -hmm. because we've done such a good job of supporting the same programming models and same languages and techniques that you would be familiar with on processors um, that we really just need to tie it back to that but show how to, to do it in the extreme levels of parallelism that this device is capable of. You know that's an interesting point too and it gets to one of the questions I think some people will have. Is this book of interest of people working not just on Intel Xeon processors but on any kind of parallel processing? Absolutely, I think so, because what, what what really distinguishes this coprocessor is the extreme levels of parallelism. So we've got up to 61 cores, whereas you might be thinking of much smaller numbers in most processors. And we've got vector units that can do 16 floating point operations at a time, whereas you might be thinking of a much smaller number for vector units and other devices. So mm -hmm. what we really are stressing here is, is how to really tune parallel programs to be able to take advantage of those higher numbers. And so anyone approaching parallelism really should understand uh, those challenges because whether you're using an Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor today or you're just going to wait till processors are this big and you know within the next decade, that this is where the world is going. So the book really stands on its own sort of as showing uh, the techniques that you need to get there, whether it's today on the coprocessor or a decade from now on processors. So where did the insights and the best practices in the book come from? Uh, are these based on your conversations with, I imagine, hundreds and dozens and hundreds of people around the world? Um, whose input is in this book? Uh, we've, we've had the great joy for several years now teaching specifically for the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. We had early prototype systems available to us and customers that had them, and so we've been doing training on that for a couple of years. And before that, I mean, we've got decades of experience teaching, um, uh, in my case, high-performance uh, programming uh, for supercomputers. Jim's expert in graphics, so we've both uh, taught parallel programming methods from different uh, avenues, but. In the last two years, uh, with the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor, with the prototype systems, we've had customers around the world that we've worked with, uh, not only teaching them, but some of them have held their own trainings. Uh, some of the folks at 
TAC and at NICS and at CSCS have also developed training material and we've been involved with that. So we've gotten to see what works and doesn't work and the book really is the culmination of taking that, that experience, that, that training experience that we've had with customers, also our application engineers have had working with customers, working on codes and take together the, the best methods we've found from teaching, the best method, methods in programming, condense them down and hopefully distill them into a useful book. Mm. So I like the promotional blurb for the book. It says, quote, pushing computing to new heights is among one of the most exciting human endeavors, both for the thrill of doing it and the thrill of what makes it possible, end quote. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some pretty interesting, even exciting applications along the way over the last couple of years. Do any stick out in your mind as being particularly interesting or innovative or particularly good use of the technologies? Uh, it's, it's amazing to see what our customers do with high levels of parallelism, and, and this device will be no different. So, uh, you know, I get to see things, people trying to solve amazing problems, either looking for um, uh, evidence of extraterrestrial life and, and scanning the heavens for um, understanding the, the universe better or uh, looking for oil, looking at seismic data to, to help, you know, deal with uh, finding more energy for the world's uh, needs. But, um, you know, my heart really goes out to the, probably the medical. Mm. That's amazing, the, the transformation that's happening in the medical industry of looking for cures for diseases, trying to understand diseases better, trying to model them. The, the amount of compute power they're looking for is am is amazing, but the keep the costs under control. You know that they look for um, the parallels to show up in devices like this that uh, are have amazing amounts of uh, computational power at a you know uh, reasonable cost. Um, and then they're looking to solve uh, problems that could affect all of our lives and increase our longevity, increase the quality of our life. So, yeah, I think the medical applications stand out in my mind as the, the ones that, you know, really tug at the heartstrings of, of things that will really make a difference around the world. Does a person um, have to have read your earlier book, uh, Structured Parallel Programming, to benefit from this book? Is is that a necessary foundation, mm -hmm. or can you just dive into this? Oh, not at all. Yeah, I think the, the books are quite different. The Structured Parallel Programming book, we took a look at how do you teach uh, parallel programming and what are some of the uh, abstract methods, we call them uh, patterns, that have proven themselves. And I think that's a very good book for someone looking to get a more intuitive feel of what it is that makes parallel programming go, and it's really aimed at C and C++ programmers. And that, that's the Structured Parallel Programming book I did with Michael McCool and Arch Robson. The uh, Intel Xeon Phi uh, High Performance Programming book is really aimed at uh, people who are, are looking at using that device. Uh, it addresses the needs of Fortran, C and C++ developers uh, in uh, high performance computing arena uh, using a device like that. So the books are very complementary and not mm -hmm. dependent on a, either uh, in mm -hmm. any way. Did anything surprise you in writing the book in terms of techniques or things you hadn't thought about or were not expecting? You know, I think the biggest thing in teaching and then putting the book together was just how much effort we had to spend on teaching um, uh, fundamentals of parallel programming, just uh, making sure that we didn't take a leap too far. We found in teaching that uh, while we might assume that people understood what a high level of parallelism meant, um, that we had to be careful not to assume too much. Uh, when, when you've got 61 cores and each of them can have four threads each and each of them can do 16 floating point operations uh, per vector at a time, they, they, the amount of parallelism there is a, uh, a pretty big jump f from what most people are used mm -hmm. to. And so making sure that we can explain how to make that leap, the things to pay attention to, that those were critically important. We weren't teaching some radical new method, but we were teaching about how to take methods that people are familiar with to some extent now and extrapolate them to levels that uh, almost nobody's ever tried before. Mm. So this is really, really literally a frontier book. Oh, absolutely, mm. absolutely. And, and, and the methods that we're using are not foreign to people that have done parallel programming, but the, the, uh, the attention to detail to make sure that you do each one of them especially well is, is really uh, why we end up with a 400-page book. Mm. 
So the book uh, is available in February. Um, it is. Uh, how can people get copies of it? Well, hopefully, just about anywhere. So I think there's a. Uh, as I look on the internet, I didn't have any trouble finding places that would let you pre-order them, including uh, Morgan Kaufman's website, Amazon, all the usual suspects. So uh, I don't think people should have much trouble finding the book. Uh, in addition to the book, are there other kinds of uh, code downloads or samples or other supplementary? Uh, mediums that you'll be offering to help people along the path? Yeah, we have a companion website with it, uh, lotsofcores.com, that uh, we reference in the book several times. Uh, we're going to put uh, the, the major code examples, the ones that the sports cars are running, we'll put the code examples up there. Uh, I think Jim and I will probably be doing presentations, so we'll probably put some of the presentation materials up there that may help instructors. Uh, I think we'll take all the figures from the book and make those available so that if people are constructing uh, complimentary presentations and want to use some of the material we had in the book, that that'll be available to them. Fantastic. The man is James Reinders. The book is coming out in February. It is Intel Xeon Phi Coprocessor High Performance Programming. James, thanks very much and congratulations. Thank you. Um, you'll also be able to see uh, James Reinders in addition to on the pages of the Gold Parallel site. He'll be out on a roadshow uh, talking about parallel programming starting in March. So keep an eye out for that schedule. You get to see him and talk with him and go deeper than we have. So thanks again, James. Thank you.